Hello fellow citizens and welcome back. Today we are going to go over enabling FreeSync in a Ubuntu or any particular version of Linux. If you've made it this far, you may have noticed that it is not Star Citizen is not running as smooth as maybe your Windows installation. This is due to the fact that FreeSync does not work out of the box on Linux. And there are a few things that we have to do in order to enable FreeSync and make sure that it is working in order to get that unbelievably butter smooth performance. Everything that I'm going to say from here on out, there are going to be caveats. There's going to be provisos. There's going to be exceptions, and I know this. But for the general purpose uh, audience, uh, these tips are going to enable FreeSync, enable butter smooth performance, and I know that there are different ways of doing that, uh, but we're going to give you the most direct and the most basic way of making sure that it is enabled and that you get that performance that you're looking for. In order to give you a general idea of how Linux works with putting an image on a screen. The old guard, the old dog is Xorg. It is a display server. It serves up the image and then you can have display managers that then take that image and compositors and put it on the screen. The old dog, Xorg, is been patched and cobbled and refined and reworked uh, for decades. Now, the new kid on the block is Wayland, and currently Ubuntu 22.04 ships with Wayland out of the box, and that's the default that it will use, is Wayland here. Wayland does not work with FreeSync. Again, there are caveats, and I know this. So, for instance, one of the caveats with Wayland is that Wayland KDE works with FreeSync out of the box. However, GNOME or GNOME, depending on your preference on how to pronounce that, Ubuntu Wayland FreeSync does not work. That means that in order to get that butter smooth performance, we're going to have to change to the old dog, the old guard of Xorg. Fortunately, Ubuntu does make it very easy to switch from Wayland to Xorg. And I'm going to show you that real quick on how to switch that over. At your login screen, if you see this in your login screen, uh, where you have to put in your password, down here in the bottom right hand side, you will see, I mean, sorry, if you don't see a little gear icon, that's okay. All you have to do is actually click on your login name. And when you click on your login name and then you see the password field that's available, click on the little gear icon down here in the bottom right hand side. Sometimes it might be up here in the middle, uh, but click on that gear icon. That's going to give you two options, Ubuntu, which is Wayland, or Ubuntu on Xorg. So you're going to want to go ahead and click on Xorg and then log in. Once you've logged in and you have Xorg running, uh, I am not doing it at the moment because OBS is not working happily with Xorg at the moment uh, on this particular install, and it would just take too much time to get it up and running. So you could come back down here to settings and about, and you would see Xorg here listed. Once you've re-logged in and have Xorg as your uh, display server, you can right click on the desktop, go to displays, and one of the limitations for Xorg is FreeSync will not work with more than one display connected to your graphics card. To fix this, once you've logged in on Xorg, come over here and change it to single display, 
and choose and make sure that the display that you, if you are running multiple displays, uh, is the one chosen. And then double check and make sure that your refresh rate is set to the refresh rate that you want. Once you have those two uh, main items fixed, single display and the refresh rate that you want, then we can go ahead and actually get FreeSync switch turned on in Xorg. And again, I know that there are caveats. Someone can write in the comments, but you can always start a new instance of Xorg. Yes, I'm aware of that. However, that's beyond this scope. We're just going to get it enabled for uh, the general purpose user. So uh, open up a terminal and we're going to turn on the switch by adding a condition in a comp file that is going to be read before the system fully boots. So we're going to go ahead and type in sudo nano slash et cetera slash capital X11 slash xorg.conf.d slash, and we're going to call this file 20-radeon.conf. When we do this, we're going to add these lines of code to the conf file. And I'll link this in the description below so that you can just copy and paste it. Now, uh, it's just going to say section device. This is just going to add uh, to the conf the device, the identifier is AMD. The driver we're using is going to be the AMD GPU. You don't need any of these here if you don't want. Uh, but the key is the option variable refresh rate true. That's the key one. That's the one that's actually going to flip the switch and turn FreeSync on. Once you have this copied and pasted in there, you're going to go ahead and control X out and save the file. And then you're going to have to reboot. When you've rebooted, you should have everything working with FreeSync enabled and you should be able to just go ahead, start the game and everything will work. But please make sure that in your monitors settings that FreeSync is enabled. When you start the game, there's gonna be a big debate, I'm sure, between a lot of people about whether or not to enable VSync in the graphic settings of Star Citizen. AMD's own recommendation, and again, this is for AMD video cards. I will do another video when I install the 3080 Ti and do the comparison performance check between the 6900 and the 3080 Ti. AMD's recommendations for competitive, like esports title gameplay, uh, where you don't want any lag at all, you're going to want to go ahead and turn the VSync and enhance sync off. For smooth, butter, butter smooth, they recommend vSync on. My personal experience is it does seem a little bit smoother with vSync on with imperceptible lag increase. If you decide to turn vSync off, it's still going to be butter smooth and it's still going to look better than your Windows implementation. So that's it. That should do it for AMD graphics cards in Linux. With all the tweaks, if you go back to my previous videos, all the tweaks, all of the settings, you're going to get a much better performance and butter smooth visual display in Linux than in your Windows install, guaranteed. Stay tuned, I'm going to do the 3080 Ti next, and I will go over the same settings, it's slightly different, uh, for the uh, NVIDIA GPUs versus AMD, and then we're going to pit them together, and we're going to show which one is better in performance, the AMD card or the NVIDIA card. Cheers, see you in the verse.